A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Ein wunderschönen guten Morgen, Winch, meine Leid. And today, a problem from the land of America, from the Math Olympiad 2021. Let S be the sum of all the x element of the positive real numbers for which this exponential equation holds. Which is true, either that S is strictly less than square root of 2, S is equal to square root of 2, S is bounded between square root of 2 and 2, S is bounded between 2 and 6, or S is greater or equal to 6. This is what we are going to find out today and it's a pretty nice problem. It's not very tough to be honest, this is just for the clickbait, but it's still a pretty fun problem. I hope you're going to enjoy it. By the way, if you're not yet familiar with number theory, how to solve exponential equations and the like, why not make sure to check out some courses over on Brian. More information at the end of the video. If you're interested before solving the problem, why not make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. Now we are going to dive right in. Now, the first thing I did was actually plug in some numbers and see if this gets me anywhere. It didn't get me anywhere, to be honest, just because of the square root of twos. They kind of messed things up really quick. Then I just went ahead and used logarithms to kind of solve for x in the process. And that's exactly what we're going to do. This is the approach that worked for me the very best. Now at first on the right hand side I want you guys to notice something, namely we have the square root of 2 here. Square root of 2 is the same as 2 to the 1 half power. So this right here is actually nothing other than 2 to the 1 half power to the 2 to the x. Now, if we were to make use of exponentiation rules, then a to the n to the mth power is the same as a to the n times mth power. Meaning this is going to give us 2 to the 1 half times 2 to the x. Now, cool thing about 1 half is that by exponentiation rules or by the definition basically of the rational numbers as a quotient field, then 1 half is nothing other than 2 to the negative 1 power, you could say. Let's rewrite this. And now we can make use of other exponentiation rules. Namely, if we have same bases multiplied together with different exponents, it's the same as having the same base and the exponents added together. Giving us overall the relation 2 to the um, 2 to the x minus 1. And this is where we are at, at the moment. Namely, that's equivalent to saying that we have um, x to the 2 to the square root of 2 is the same as 2 to the 2 to the x minus 1. Now, I'm going to make use of logarithms. Now, at first I was using natural logarithms. This also gets you to the solution, but it's a bit more complicated because at the very end you need to do a change of base. This is not needed, actually. What we can do is we can apply log base 2 on both sides. If we were to apply log base 2 on both sides, let's write it here. Log base 2 of all of this um, is equal to log base 2 of all of this. Then, since this right here is the exponent and this right here is the exponent, we can bring it to the front, making use of logarithm properties, giving us the equation um, 2 to the square root of 2 times the log base 2 of x is equal to 2 to the x minus 1 times the log base 2 of 2. And by definition, log base a of a is the same as 1. Meaning, we got this equation now. Now, this is the point where I plugged numbers in at first. And it works out somehow, but it's not a various uh, not a very good way to go at it. What I did was I got rid of yet another 2 by applying log base 2 once again on both sides. If we were to apply log base 2 on both sides once again, then we get log base 2 of 2 to the square root of 2 times log base 2 of x is equal to log base 2 of 2 to the x minus 1. Now once again, making use of the logarithm properties, we can bring the x minus 1 to the front. And also here we can break the logarithm up. Since we have multiplication of arguments by the function equation of the logarithm, this gives us logarithm blah 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 of the first thing plus the logarithm blah 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 of the second thing. Now we are going to do this, giving us in the process. That this right here is equivalent to saying we are going to get log base 2 of 2 to the square root of 2. Um, plus log base 2 of log base 2 of x 
is equal to, and then we're going to get x minus 1 times log base 2 of 2. Once again, by the same argument as before, log base 2 of 2 is by definition just 1. And here we have the same situation as before. We have log base 2 of 2 to the something. We can bring the something to the front, square root of 2. And once again, log base 2 of 2 is just 1. Giving us overall the equation at the moment, that this right here is equivalent to saying we get square root of 2 plus log base 2 of log base 2 of x is equal to x minus 1. And the only thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to subtract square root of 2 on both sides. Giving us overall that this is equivalent to saying log base 2 of log base 2 of x is equal to um, x minus square root of 2 minus 1. And what we got right here is actually something that we can interpret in a graph. Now what we have here on the right hand side is simply a polynomial. It's a first degree polynomial. It's just basically a regular um, parent function shifted about, um, let's see, square root of 2 is about 1.5 you could say. So this is just a parent function or identity shifted um, negative 2.5 units in the downwards y direction. So if we were to graph this, we get negative 2.5 approximately and we got our function here. And what is the other point it goes through? Well, um, we just need to take a look at the zero um, of this function right here. So if we set this equal to zero, just this part right here, putting this uh, into a box. If we add those on both sides, we are obviously going to get about 2.5 once again positive 2.5 because as mentioned before it's just an identity function being shifted in the downwards y direction so uh, here's 2.5 meaning this right here is our first function um, just like this it's a linear function um, now what about the other side that's a bit more complicated but also not very much let us just focus on the log base 2 here with some kind of argument in here once the argument that we got in here is equal to 1 our log base 2 of 1 is going to approach 0. When is log base 2 of x equal to 1? Well, when x is equal to 2. So for x being equal to, to 2, which is here, we are going to get that our logarithm is 0. And then we have the regular logarithm um, basically shape, meaning here it's going to converge to infinity very slowly and approaching x being equal to 0 or our argument equal to 0, I should put it like this, um, then we are going to get negative infinity. This is what the graph looks like and what you want to find out is the sum of the x values satisfying our original equation. But our original equation is fundamentally equivalent to what we got here. So what we need to take a look at is just the sum of those two points where those two new functions are going to intersect. Now let us do some analysis on these points. Now what I did is the hardest part to find out the intersection points basically and we just need to bound the intersection points roughly is to find values for the, the logarithm of blah 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 on the left hand side that we can plug in for x such that it simplifies nicely. The first thing that came to my mind since the intersection point here must be less than 2 I tried with square root of 2. What happens if we plug square root of 2 into here? Then x being equal to square root of 2. We are going to get the log base 2 of the log base 2 of 2 to the 1 half power. This is square root of 2. Now we can bring the 1 half to the front here. Log 2 of 2 is going to give us just 1 once again. So we are going to be left with logarithm base 2 of 1 half. As I mentioned before, 1 half is the same as 2 to the negative 1 half power. Bringing the negative 1 to the front, exponentiation rule, we are going to get that this right here, log base 2 of log base 2 of um, square root of 2 is just going to give us negative 1. What happens if we plug it in on the right hand side? So is this equal to the right hand side? So we get square root of 2 minus square root of 2 minus 1. Obviously these are going to cancel out giving us zero. So negative one is equal to negative one. That is just by taking a look at this graph and basically guessing some kind of power of two. We actually get that this right here is the first intersection point. At um, x, I'm going to call it x1, being equal to square root of two. Now the next point, if we take a look at the graph, 
must be bigger than 2.5 in some kind of way. So x equals to 2.5 is definitely not a point where they are both going to intersect for obvious reasons, since those are both the zeros of the functions and, do, and they don't meet on the x-axis. Now, the next power of two, which would come in handy, which is bigger than 2.5 as the x value was four, because four is two squared. What happens if we plug four into here? Now, log base two of log base two of two squared, which is four. We can bring the two to the front once again. Log base two of two is going to give us one. And log base two of two is going to give us one once again. So log base two of log base two of four is the same as one. What happens if we plug four into here? Is this equal to four minus square root of two minus one? Now, as mentioned before, negative square root of two minus one is roughly negative two dot five. So this right here, just roughly, is about one dot five overall. So meaning, if we plug x being equal to four into here, this is actually bigger than the intersection point that we got right here. This exceeds our intersection point. And this information is already more than enough to basically solve our problem. Now, x1, let's get it again, is square root of two. And our x2, this intersection point right here, is going to be bounded between four, is strictly less than four most definitely, and square root of two. Actually, this right here is um, even bounded um, over 2.5, okay? For obvious reasons, just take a look at the graphs, just, just some simple analysis. But the information that we got here is already more than enough. Now, can s be less than square root of two? If we add both of those together, obviously not, since x1 is already square root of two and x2 is non-zero. So this right here doesn't work out. Can s be equal to square root of two? No, by the same means not. Now, what about s being bounded between square root of two and two? This means that we basically have um, x2 being equal to roughly 0 0.5, which also isn't the case because it exceeds square root of two by our graph and also by our analysis. So s is at least two times square root of two. So this right here also doesn't work out. What about s being bounded between two and six. I mean, it's most definitely greater than two. This is what we get at. It's at least two times square root of two, but also it can't be bigger than square root of two plus four. It can't be bigger than that. This is what we bounded it at. And square root of two plus four is roughly 5.5. Meaning this option right here works out and by the same reasoning, S can't be bigger than six because um, of our bounds that we got. This right here doesn't work out and this right here is actually the solution to our problem. And I think this was a very fun analysis of this exponential equation that we got here. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And I hope you found my solution quite elegant because I certainly did. And if you want to see more problems like this, contest mathematics, analysis, calculus, etc., then I invite you to try out the contents of today's sponsor, Brian, who will kind of sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Now, graphics like these really help take a problem apart. It would have been a problem for me to basically analyze the boundaries of this new function that we got right here, or the intersection of these new functions, by just taking a look at the numbers. This graph really helped. And Brilliant is really good at creating graphics and visuals that you can play around with, creating an interactive field for the users where you can learn something new every day. Brilliant is an online learning platform and app with nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it the contest mathematics that we did today, computer sciences, chemistry, physics, no matter what it is you want to learn in the STEM field, Brilliant definitely got something up their sleeve for you. And the best part about Brilliant, at least in my opinion, is their interactive learning concept. I, for myself, have never seen something comparable with such a high level of quality before on the internet. And it really speaks for itself how Brian manages to transfer the knowledge over to their users. In a very playful manner, you are going to, for example, find something out about this function that we got right here. This is just an example. They don't have the exact problem over on their website, but very similar problems at that. 
Maybe you're not good at finding the bounds, but what you are good at is taking the levers and varying the parameters over into interactive graphics that you can play around with. Use your own two hands, your mouse, and basically shift functions around or maybe shift points around on the graph up until it reaches the intersection point. It's very playful and very intuitive and gives you a great understanding of the problem at hand. And if this feels like something for you, if you want to try it out, big portion already for free, then why not make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, preen.org slash maths. With it, you're going to get free access to a big portion of print already, as mentioned before. But more importantly, the first 100 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an in premium subscription, which is a great deal, considering how much content they actually have available on their website already, and how much content they are adding on a regular basis. Since I started working with Brilliant, I know about a lot of users who actually got themselves a premium subscription for Brilliant. And some of these people have been around on Brilliant for the last couple of years. For the three years, Brilliant has been sponsoring my channel. And it's just great hearing about the people who have learned something new through my recommendations. And if you got questions, maybe you're not certain if you should get yourself a premium subscription for Brilliant, then why not make sure to ask the community down there in the comments below. Or maybe ask the great support team of Brilliant. They are very nice people. They answer each and every question for you. No questions asked. <laughs> they are just nice. They are very nice people and they are going to help you out. So yeah, definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. After that, don't forget to check out Flemmy's Wood. This is where your papa plays around with his wood a tiny little bit and stemage.eu for my handcrafted products. And up until the next video, I wish you guys uh, a massive shirt day. Do I look like Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh, I'm, I'm so strong with this. Ciao.